given the opportunity to be independent, they will move, move proudly into the economic mainstream of American life, and that's what this legislation is all about. And to cheers on the lawn of the White House, President George H.W. Bush finally made the years-long efforts of disability advocates across America the law of the land, a law that started off in complete silence in the houses of Congress. The ADA is indeed the 20th Century Emancipation Proclamation. Retired Iowa Senator Tom Harkin says this was his proudest day in the years he served in Congress. When given the opportunity to be independent, they will move, move proudly into the economic mainstream of American life, and that's what this legislation is all about. And to cheers on the lawn of the White House, President George H.W. Bush finally made the years-long efforts of disability advocates across America the law of the land, a law that started off in complete silence in the houses of Congress. The ADA is indeed the 20th Century Emancipation Proclamation. Retired Iowa Senator Tom Harkin says this was his proudest day in the years he served in Congress. A measure that had languished in both houses was finally made official. Today, Congress opens the doors to all Americans with disabilities. Harkin's passion for those Americans denied their basic civil rights started at a young age. It all stems from my early involvement with my older brother Frank, who was deaf, and seeing how society in general treated him, low expectations, uh, barriers, uh, uh, how he wanted to do different things, but people wouldn't let him. Uh, how he wanted to live independently and had to fight for that. And I just thought, a long time ago, as a young man, perhaps, I thought, boy, something ought to be done about it. If I was ever in a position to do something about this, I'd do it. That he did. And it was just the start of this true public servant's journey of helping people with disabilities help themselves. Then, after I was in the house, my nephew, my sister's boy, was injured in an accident and became severely paraplegic. Harkin traveled to Colorado and saw that Kelly couldn't eat at a restaurant with his family because his wheelchair couldn't fit through the front door, couldn't cross the street, ride a bus, and it just got worse for this young boy. His Uncle Tommy said, uh, I'm here and I, they've got a class that I want to take. It's on the second floor of a building. There's no elevator, so they won't let me take the class. I said, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. The former Democratic senator from Iowa says it was clear that a broad civil rights bill had to be created. I had sort of a, a progression. So my brother, who was deaf, then my nephew, who was uh, uh, mobility limited, and then I met Danny Piper, a young man with intellectual disabilities, had Down syndrome, and how hard his parents fought for him to get an education, and how much Danny could do. I mean, he had a lot of abilities, but people didn't expect him to do anything. Harkin says the ADA is about helping people help themselves. There's another bill that I drafted and sponsored, and it got through, which impacts your life every day and everybody else's, and nobody knows I ever did it. Even before the passage of the ADA here in Washington, Harkin was the man behind closed captioning, which finally allowed the hearing impaired to fully enjoy television. There's a bill called the, the Television Decoder and Circuitry Act. How about that for a name? That's true. Harkin's first bill mandated every TV sold here in America had to have a chip or decoder which allowed closed captioning to appear on any TV 13 inches or bigger. He made sure that this would happen within five years. It wasn't easy. And I said, well, you know, if this is going to cost a couple hundred dollars a set, I, I, I can't sell this. I can't get this passed. And I'll never get it. He said, well, if you make a hundred of them, yeah, it's going to cost you $100 a set, or if you make a thousand of them. But if you make millions of them, the cost will be almost nothing. That's what gave me the idea of mandating. <laughs> mandate that every television has to have it. You know, you couldn't get a mandate past the day to save your soul. My idea was this is really going to help people with deafness, hard of hearing, to understand what's going on and being 
now understanding they would be able to more participate in daily life, activities, businesses, jobs, everything else. That it did, and then some. Closed captioning caught on and caught on quick. The biggest user? Sports bars. They got a dozen TVs, and the only way you're gonna find out what's going on is you gotta read the captions, and it's noisy. <laughs> and then Sesame Street picked it up, and they started doing it with uh, English as a second language. If you make things easier, better, more accessible for persons with disabilities. It helps everyone. Everyone does it better. Everyone benefits from this. Harkin was on to something, then on to yet another group of forgotten citizens. How about people with invisible disabilities? How about people with intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities? Harkin says it's the way our society teaches that's to blame. The brain doesn't function well enough to learn as rapidly as others. They can learn, but it just takes a little bit more time and goes through a little bit more filters. In other words, making sure that their physical environment, their social environment, is something they can adapt to to finish a task. It's amazing. <laughs> People that you don't think can function, if the construct, if the physical environment has changed a little, they can function just fine. With more than 5,000 colleges and universities in the U.S., only a handful specialize in so-called invisible disabilities. One is located in the small Florida town of Leesburg. I think that Beacon really has set the standard for kids with learning disabilities, for autism, ADHD, others, to actually learn and then become fully functioning members of society. They've had to tailor programs, tailor the way things are done, but that's okay. Having a college like Beacon, and hopefully we'll spawn, Beacon will spawn more like Beacons around the country, the importance of that is that we're now understanding our country's wasting a lot of abilities of people that could contribute to our country, to contribute to our economic growth, uh, contribute to our, 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 our well-being as a society. My dream was always that we would have the federal government begin to invest in beacon-like colleges using beacon as the uh, sort of the, the the model why don't we have one of these on the west coast we need a lot more beacons in this country harkin's focus on education doesn't stop at higher level education for those with learning differences before i left the senate my last bill was to change voc rehab so i set aside 15 percent of all federal money that goes to vote rehab to focus on um, getting summer school jobs, after school jobs for kids who are in IEP in school. He quickly realized kids who are in independent education programs or IEPs don't get treated the same way as kids in traditional high school. One of the problems with kids that are on IEPs, individual education programs in high school, is that they finish their IEP and then they're just dropped off the face of the earth. They get a dead-end job. I started looking into this and found that during high school, kids with disabilities, whether physical or intellectual or both, never got the kind of opportunities that other kids got, non-disabled kids. Like what? Summer jobs, after-school jobs, weekend jobs, volunteering for the Red Cross, volunteering for community chess, volunteering for good the vol church volunteers, things like that where you're pulled into a group and you have a job to do. They had no work experience. The retired former senator from Iowa believes these kids need these opportunities to succeed in life. You can't just sit around. You gotta do something. You gotta go to work. You gotta dress up. You gotta behave yourself. I said, you know, kids with disabilities, a lot of times, are just like kids without disabilities. They need a good swift kick in the pants sometime, get them out the door. Young people need to develop that sort of inner strength and that inner ability to start making good decisions. Still, more hurdles ahead for these students, like being paid a fair wage. Again, Harkin took to the floor. Uh, there's a certain provision in law that you can pay a person with a disability sub-minimum wage. We're still trying to change that. If you qualify, you can pay a person sub-minimum wage down to even like 50 cents an hour. 
Oh, it's just. That exists today? It exists today, exactly right. Subminimum wage. Even though he couldn't get rid of subminimum wage, Harkin took on the problem and got results. Before a company can submit the forms, IRS forms, to pay the subminimum wage, they have to show that this person has tried over a three year period of time that they could not do a job that paid at least the minimum wage. The movement today is still getting rid of the subminimum wage. We still want to get rid of the subminimum wage. We just haven't done it yet. Hopefully, sometime soon that will happen. Still, the fight for equality continues. There's still one group missing. Even though he's retired, Harkin still stays active. Now, he wants Congress to take up the issue of LGBTQ rights. You can still discriminate, and there's no law against it. There may be some state laws or maybe some local ordinances and stuff like that. There's no overarching federal civil rights law. Harkin says there are champions on Capitol Hill that are picking up where he left off. Lawmakers who will make a difference in the future toward the goal of inclusiveness. I think we've seen that in, in my lifetime, in the last dozen years, on gay people. Gee, that's just like changed overnight. So you're right, I mean, things, things can change. To this day, the retired Iowa senator is working in his own backyard to ensure every building in America will be accessible to all Americans. We gotta get that next, and I'm working on it now. And we have a champion in the Senate. Hopefully before the year's out, he'll introduce a bill, not that it's gonna pass, but to set, sort of set the template for the future. For now, Harkin is putting his energy into an institute named in his honor at Drake University in Iowa. It will have a building designed with cutting edge technology to assist all Americans with disabilities and help them achieve their path to independence. We raised enough money to build a building. When it's done, I believe it will be the most accessible building in America for persons with disabilities. Not just physical, intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities. We are going to have places for people with autism to work or to access. Uh, we'll have support systems uh, for people with severe cerebral palsy. But we'll have the technology there that they can access information or input information. Looking forward, the Harkin Institute should be complete in the fall of 2021. But it was in the past, in July of 1990, that one of the ADA's biggest champions made it the law. I now lift my pen to sign this Americans with Disability Act and say, let the shameful wall of exclusion finally come tumbling down. God bless you all. On that sunny day 30 years ago, over 4,000 people covered the South Lawn of the White House. It's the biggest crowd to date for the signing of a bill. A bill that dozens and dozens of legislatures labored over for decades. Its sponsor? An Iowa senator with a vision for all Americans to be included. My final speech in the Senate, my goodbye speech, and at the end of it, I said, I'm going to teach you all a sign. This is a teachable moment. I'm going to teach you a sign. Now take your hands, put them together like this. Get your fingers interlocked. Now move your hand in a circular motion in front of your body. You know what that's a sign for? It's a sign for America. Wow. Everybody together, all connected. No one's left out of the circle of life in America. We're all included in this constant circle of life. That's the sign. It's a wonderful, it's a beautiful sign. That's a beautiful sign for America.